going to start the quiz. All the best to everyone. So the first question is, the pie chart shows data for 100 people. How many people are represented by the green section? Very simple question, observation based. OK, so you can see that uh, it's representing half of the circle. And pie chart is a circle graph. So answer is correct answer is 50. And let us see who is there on the top on the leaderboard. OK, I can see Anya Gupta has scored 920 points. Just to let you know that each question in this quiz has been assi assigned 1,000 points. How you can score more points that depends on number one, correctness of the question and uh, correctness of the answer. And then second thing is how quickly you attempt a question. That also is an essential thing for getting more number of points. So moving on to the next question. The red section contains 10 people. How many people are in the red and blue sections together? Again, an observation based question. Interesting. So here, 18 students have uh, given the right answer. So you need to be very alert and quite observant in seeing what graph is available to you so that you, you can infer information from there. OK, moving on to next and see. OK, now you can see that there is a change in the leaderboard. And you can keep watching the leaderboard. Moving on to the next question. Get ready. Question number three, the green section represents 20 people. How many people does the whole chart represents? OK, good. So you see. Half of the chart was represented by 20 people. So it's very simple. So the whole chart represents 40. Moving on to the next. Keep watching the leaderboard. And the next question is, how many degrees would you need to measure to draw the red section of this chart? Again, observation-based question. OK, so here 29 students have responded and 24 have done it correctly. You see, it's representing quarter of a sector. And uh, that's basically one quadrant. Do you remember you did that in introduction to graphs also? So that quarter sector is having the angle of 90 degrees. It makes a right angle. Moving on to next. See the change is there in the leaderboard. So keep watching. Question number five, which part of the trip cost the most money? Observe carefully. Interesting. So 28 of you have done it right. And that's quite uh, visible in the chart. You can just see the highest percentage. So answer to the question is hotel. Moving on to next. OK, again, there is a change in the leaderboard. I told you here that you have to be quick enough to select the answer. And number two, 
the answer should be right so here we can see that sahaj is there on the top moving on to next question number 6 what angle will the yellow sector be in this pie very interesting now you know that you must have used over here that central angle of a circle is 360 degrees and using that concept you can find the remaining uh, that sector angle of the portion which was represented so the correct answer here is 60 degrees moving on to next okay so you see the change in the leaderboard Question number seven. This pie chart shows the result of a survey of thirty people. How many choose to walk? So total number of people is thirty. great so here you have seen that uh, walking was having the sector angle 120 degrees so to find the total number of people so we need to do the calculations 120 divided by 360 into 30 so what is the answer answer to this question is 10 moving on to next so again there is a change in the leaderboard so keep watching best of luck question number 8 what was the second most popular form of transport in this survey so this pie chart is indicating the survey on the transport used by people interesting so most of the you, who you have uh, done it correctly so the answer is car move on to the next next question is question number 9 you need to say true or false in this survey twitter is bigger than youtube and linkedin combined so you can see in which situations we are able to use the pie chart yes it's a false statement so moving on to next Next question is if 30 students prefer cycling how many prefer swimming quite an interesting question take your time and try to solve okay that's interesting 23 of you have done it correctly so the answer to the question is 45 i hope you have used the same concept which we have used in the previous question for counting the total number of students moving on to next okay you can see there is a change in the leaderboard question number 11 when drawing a pie chart from this data what angle would represent 
one car observe it closely so you are given a frequency table using a tally marks and you need to tell what angle would represent one car see how in this situation also we are using mathematics you have 24 seconds good 25 students have answered so far okay so the correct answer is 6 and 14 students have done it correctly so you need to practice such kinds of questions moving on to next question number 12 if 60 people prefer apple pie how many prefer rhubarb so no you must have heard this name first so i was reading about this on net that it's a kind of fruit so when i looked into the picture of this it came to me as some kind of a leaf with red sticks so rubab that that was something new for me so while making the question i learned something new so you can also check the type of fruit it is mentioned but it appeared to me like a vegetable you need to improve your calculations yes so i can see 24 of you have answered so far Ten more seconds to go. So good. Twenty of you have done it right, and the answer to this question is five. Moving on to next. Thirteenth question. so you need to answer what are histograms very simple question so 27 of you have done it right very nice so histograms are graph with no gaps between the columns good moving on to next Question number fourteen: Which type of data are histograms drawn from? I shared this information in the class that you can make histogram from which type of data? yes continuous data is required for making the histogram that's the right answer moving on to next okay now you see there is again change in the leaderboard question number 
you need to tell is it a histogram very simple question interesting 29 students have got it right yes it is not a histogram moving on to next find the probability of getting the nine so you are given a spinner on which some numbers are written so what is the probability of getting the number nine when we spin I will wait for two more seconds. I don't think this much of time is required. Okay. So the correct answer is one by four. Perfectly fine. Moving on to next. Question number 17. Find the probability of the event that the card drawn is brown. So you can see how many cards are there number of brown cards and then get the probability very simple i will stay for two more seconds okay so we got the answer one by two is the right answer moving on to next see depending on the time the position in the leaderboard is changing Okay, 18th question. What is the probability of picking a monkey from these cards? Very simple. Yes, the answer is 1 by 3. So you must have seen that there are four pictures having the picture of a monkey out of 12. So four by 12 gives us one by three. Moving on to next. Okay, this time there is no change in the leaderboard. So question number 19. What is the probability of rolling a even number on a dice? Very simple question. So you can see the answer to this question is 1 by 2. So there are two correct answers marked. 3 by 6 is also correct. Moving on to next. And the next question is, question number 20, which of these numbers cannot be a probability? Now you see that probability cannot be negative. It can be zero. It can be a number between zero and one, which is in a decimal form or in the percentage form. It can be one. So here I can see that some of you have marked wrong answers. So please learn that probability cannot be negative. So the first part is the correct answer. Moving on to next. No change in the leaderboard. Question number 21. What is the probability of getting a two on a six sided dice? So the answer to the question is one by six, very simple. 
And we know that in a dice, there are six outcomes, one, two, three, four, five, six, and all are equally likely outcomes. So we get the probability of getting the two as one by six. Moving on to next. So change in the leaderboard is there. Question number 22, what is the probability of rolling a one on a six sided dice? Very simple. Great, all of you have done it right. So one by six is the right answer. So time, okay, this time there is no change. That's interesting. Question number 23, what is the theoretical probability of getting a number one on a dice? It's again one by six. So 27 of you have done it right. I don't know why people are marking wrong answers. So learn here that there are six possible outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, six. All are equally likely. So getting one, the answer is one by six. Getting two, the answer is one by six. So the probability of getting five is also one by six. So you need to learn that. Moving on to next. Okay, there is a change. Question number 24 of 30. What is the theoretical probability of getting an odd number on a dice? Very simple things have been asked in this quiz just to check how quickly you can respond. So the answer is one by two, you know, one, three and five are the odd numbers. And these are three of them. So three on, out of six. So we get the answer as one by two. No change in the leaderboard. Moving on to next question number 25. What is the probability of getting an even number on a six sided dice? You see, you need to see how quickly you can respond. All the questions in the end are to see you can change your position in the leaderboard. Quickly give the answer. And here the correct answer is one by two. So 28 of you have done it right. So let me see if there is a change. No, no, no. There is no change in the board. Moving on to the next question. Question number 26. On a regular dice, what's the probability of rolling a three? It's mentioned that you need to round your answer. So the answer is 17%. I don't know, some of you are marking the other answers. So be careful, how do you get the probability? And here you need to calculate it in percentage. Moving on to next. See the changes there in the board. Question number 27. What is the probability if Julia rolled a six-sided dice and rolled a five? Okay, the answer is one by six. Some of you are still marking it wrong. I'm surprised. No change in the leaderboard. Moving on to question number 28. What is the probability of getting a sum nine from two throws of dice? Be careful while answering. 
getting a sum 9 you need to see all possible outcomes So you can see that here only three of you have marked it right. Now you just imagine the sample space when you throw a pair of dice. So when you throw a pair of dice, you get outcomes as 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, up to 1, 6. Then 2, 1, 2, 2. 2, 3, up to 2, 6. Similarly, 3, 1, 2, 3, 6. 4, 1, 2, 4, 6. 5, 1, 2, 5, 6. And 6, 1, 2, 6, 6. My dear students, see in this case, there will be total 36 outcomes. And out of these 36 outcomes, you have to look for favorable outcomes when you get some of numbers as nine please write in the chat box in how many outcomes you get the sum as nine so there are four such outcomes six three five four four five and three six so four out of 36, what is the correct answer? 4 upon 36. Answer is 1 upon 9. So this is a, you know, takeaway from this quiz. You have to learn questions based on double dice problem. I will be sharing with you a Google form in which I will be adding one video question, which is based on solving probability based questions on a double dice okay like today i shared with you one assignment in which hot's question based question on this pie chart was given similarly you will be solving a question which is based on double dice problem so you have to acquire the skill of observing the sample space of double dice okay moving on to next Question number 29, what is the probability of getting three or four on a six-sided dice? Very simple. So the answer is 1 by 3. So there are two favorable outcomes, either 3 or 4 out of 6. So we get 2 divided by 6. Answer is 1 by 3. Moving on to next. This is the last question which will decide who is the winner of today's quiz. Very simple. What is the probability of getting a number? less than five on a six sided dice getting a number less than five less than five meaning you can get either one two three or four so there are four favorable outcomes so four divided by six that gives you 2 divided by 3. So, let us see the podium. Aditya Rai, congratulations for getting the third position. Pranay, 
congratulations for getting the second position and winner of today's quiz is niharika runners up are praneel and anya congratulations to all of you so let's do students you need to write down your experience of playing the quiz in the chat box did you learn something new today yes 